I'm Bella. And I'm Oliver. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the transcript. transcript. This week, the transcript explores the issue of cell phone use in classrooms. Hamped Up steps up to the plate with the softball team. And talks to members of the trans community about their experience at NHS. On Wednesday, 68 people were killed in a fire in a Venezuelan prison. The fire swept through holding cells in the state police headquarters. Venezuelan prisons are vastly overcrowded, and inmates are often detained in holding cells past the legal limit of 48 hours. Police fired tear gas to disperse groups of relatives seeking information about their family members. This week, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un paid a surprise, unofficial visit to China. Chinese officials said Wednesday that Kim Jong-un pledged to denuclearize and that talks were successful. North Korea and South Korea will hold official talks on April 27th, which will precede talks between President Trump and North Korea. Twelve states have announced plans to sue to block the Trump administration from placing a question on the 2020 census about citizenship. The states claim that asking about respondent citizenship would be unconstitutional and result in undercounting U.S. population due to residents not responding. The Trump administration has justified adding the question by claiming it is necessary in order to provide an accurate count of eligible U.S. voters. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo, and this is Tell It Like It Is. In recent years, smartphones have become an important way for Americans to communicate, go online, access, and share information. But there can also be addicting consequences with the constant use of phones. So this week, we are exploring classroom cell phone policies at Northampton High School. Northampton High School's electronic devices policy states that the use of personal electronic devices is considered a privilege and not a right in school, and students should be responsible for using them at appropriate times. I spoke to teachers Donna Canuel-Brown and Deborah Kuhn to get their perspective on the role of cell phones in classrooms. In a perfect world, I think that kids would voluntarily put them away although I think that's unlikely. So I would like to see it be a more firm policy where students could use them at lunch or between classes, but not during the class unless specifically needed for an assignment. Mostly I really don't want to see them. I want them in the backpacks with the backpack zipped up. So the temptation is completely gone. I think some of the negative impacts have to do with the amount of energy I have to expend as a teacher because I end up spending time monitoring cell phone use um, and I don't think that's a good use of my time um, and the reason I want to make the reason I want to make sure that the kids don't have their phones out at inappropriate times is that it's really really distracting. The conversation around cell phone use by young adults is one happening across the country. Recently, Jana Partners, a leading activist shareholder and California teacher pension investor, CALSDRS, one of the nation's largest public pension plans, delivered a letter to Apple asking the company to consider developing software that will allow parents more options to limit children's phone use and asking Apple to study the impact of excessive phone use on mental health. I heard something on NPR, I think, where they were talking about suing Apple the way they sued the tobacco companies because of the addictive effects of cell phone. And th they also talked about putting your phone on gray scale so it's not as colorful and therefore not as attractive. Um, and that seems like a good idea. Um, I think ultimately people are going to have to come to these conclusions on their own. Um, but I think knowledge and more education is certainly required. It scares me a little bit that some kids become dependent on their phones and it also scares me a little bit because a lot of the studies that come out um, relate increased phone use to depression especially among young girls. Each teacher in school has different strategies to deal with cell phones in their classroom such as asking students for their cell phones before class and keeping it in a box, giving students a five minute break during class to use their cell phone and more all to be able to keep helping students with their learning. I'm Fleur Castillo, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this?
The official start of the spring season means one thing for NHS sports. The boys of the spring, also known as the softball team, are back and ready to get started. The team is filled with mostly returning varsity players due to only losing one senior last year. I decided to check in with seniors Jenna Subox and Abby Pilas to discuss their goals for their final season and the history behind their famous team motto, One Team, One Dream. It means that our whole team has one dream and we can only um, achieve, achieve it, it if we work together. together. Yeah. You're one team achieving one dream. Yeah. I don't really know where it originated. Our my captains dad's just gave it to us. <laughs> no, my dad found it. Yeah, and just told us that was our motto. I think in our last season, we just, we hope to make it to playoffs, like make it as far as yeah. we can and like just have as much and fun as we can along the way. we hope to beat Minnetog. Beat Minnetog. <laughs> April 23rd and May 11th, important dates. Yes. You want to beat Minnetog, <laughs> make playoffs, go as far as you can, and have fun. Also eager to get on the field this season is junior Marissa Batterini, who missed her sophomore season due to an ACL injury. I sat down with her to discuss her recovery process and what her goals are for her returning season. I tore my ACL in December, but I didn't get surgery until July. So that first month of recovery, was essentially just like being able to straighten your leg and get the range of motion back and super simple exercises just to get that motion back. And then after I was more comfortable with that, I started to get into a little bit of strength stuff and I would say that probably went on for like three months. And then after that, I started the jump program which is essentially just like plyometrics and lateral movements. Well, I'd say my biggest goal is more of a team goal and that'd be to win Western Mass. The sport comes with a lot of athletic challenges and requires a deep understanding of the game. But an additional challenge for senior Ava Luna Santiago is playing with English being her second language. I sat down with her to discuss what motivated her to play and how she handles the challenge of learning both the game and the language. Because when I was later, my, my grandfather was playing softball, so yeah. He died and I wanted to play it too. It was like really hard to know the rules and the directions the first year because I, I didn't know English and the instruction was like really hard because I don't understand. The softball team has their first game Monday, April 2nd here at NHS at 4 p.m. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Odette Bennis and welcome back to Hit It or Miss It, where all things pop culture are covered. For decades, Northampton has been known as a liberal town that is open to anyone despite their race, ethnicity, sexuality, gender, and etc. However, not every group at Northampton High feels this attitude of welcoming and inclusion. This week, I ventured out and I spoke with our trans students to hear about their daily struggles in NHS as well as feeling underrepresented in our school community. I found that um, talking to administration and guidance office has been fine. Like They're very... Um, supportive. I think because trans community is so underrepresented here, I feel like a lot of people, like, they might not be hostile towards the idea, but they don't really know how to approach it. So a lot of people can approach it jokingly or humorously, which can be an issue like when people joke about, like, calling me it. I've talked to a lot of other students and they said that they, their teachers, like, maybe completely skipped talking about LGBT issues and wellness and health classes at all. I think the categorization of trans people and like putting them into that box can be really detrimental for people yeah. um, and really destructive to like self-esteem and identity just because I know personally I'd much rather be viewed as a man than a trans man. People are afraid of things they don't understand mm -hmm. and I feel like in order to, they feel like they need to put themselves above it somehow and I feel like to do that they say things like that, like mm -hmm. belittling things like have you ever heard a middle-aged person say trans trender? It's like it's like a term they're using now oh, for like actually, um, yeah. people hopping on the bandwagon just because like it's cool right now. Even though I'm saying all of these things that, that may be flawed in our school, I'm just saying that I think this is a good progress that we've come to right now, but we definitely have a long way to go. With me, um, getting my name to Aria on Aspen um, and the class lists for when they read out your names has been a struggle without legally changing your name, which takes the money and time and paperwork. <laughs> when there's a sub, and so they read my birth name and it's really awkward and people in the class who don't necessarily know I'm trans are just kind of like, 
really confused. Maybe give a chance for the actual transgender student or person to speak instead. And then if you see a trans person isn't able to speak, maybe help them be able to speak so they can assert themselves in the future. In recent years, groups such as the Student Union, Feminist Collective, and Gender Sexuality Alliance has been working on creating more gender-neutral bathrooms at Northampton High School in an effort to make our school more inclusive for all gendered identities. However, the students I spoke to say there's still a lot of work to be done to make our school feel more welcoming and safe. I'm Odette Bennis, and this was Hit It or Miss It. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching, and head over to nhstechnology.org to watch this week's online extra. Don't forget to support the NHS band because we're performing at Carnegie Hall tonight. It's Deb Kuhn's last year's band director and this is her last big performance. Go, Go band! I quite enjoy the clocks being five minutes off uh, because at the end of the day the clock's at like 1.55 and then the bell rings and I'm like, school's over, let's go. Robotics is in a way the future. It's it eclipses almost every part of STEM. And it also teaches you a lot of really important lessons about life.